Donna, you need to help us out there, okay? We've got a little song. This is a new song. It's called One Maker. It is a little bit more of a different pace, a little more reflective. But I love it. Same. Falling, river running, flower dying in the fall. Dead of winter, spring is coming, who can understand? 
gather trusting in God's grace, whose mercy knows no bounds. Let us together reflect on our need for that grace and make our confession together. Loving God, we know your voice calls us and we should go. But often we listen instead to the many other voices, the ones that say, stay quiet, the ones that urge me alone. alone, the ones that mock. You are not worthy. Forgive us the times that we stray. Give us ears to hear your voice above all the others. Then grant us the courage to respond to that call. Amen. We sing our praise. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on. Kindness of a Savior.
Please be seated. In our readings today, we hear from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Then from Galatians 3, verses 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Jesus Christ. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all today. Thanks for coming. Today, we have a little bit of a different theme in front of us than we normally do. Today, we're, once a month, we're going to be taking a little bit of a stewardship focus theme. And today, we are talking about being stewards of God's grace. Especially with those words from Galatians that we heard. Really focusing on those. When I was in high school, I played basketball. And for me, that meant three years of starting on junior varsity. When I got to my senior year, I played on varsity. Spent most of my time on the bench. I would come in and clean up times when we were way behind or way ahead. Or in that off chance in which several people followed out, several people, maybe someone got hurt, or other circumstances that kept a few people off the court once or twice. Except on senior night. On senior night, the five seniors, four of them had earned a starting job, the fifth one did not. But on senior night, we all got to start. And so I got to go out, before, even before the game started, we'd go out and we'd meet our parents at half court, right? Give our mom the flower, and then kind of be awkward with our dad, you know, shake the hand, do something cool. We really weren't quite sure what to do, but we did something. And so I go out there and I do that. And af I kid you not, after I greet my parents and I'm turning, right, to leave, we should be done, my dad in the half court says, with this little motion, Shoot the ball. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. So we go back, and I still remember the moment of starting the game because I'd never done it before in a varsity game, and it was a little different, and I was nervous, and there were butterflies in my stomach, and I, I remember that moment well. And so I played my, you know, the coach gave me, what, two and a half minutes or so to start, played really tough. And then I went out, and the regular person came in. But we really played pretty well that night. And it was a close game. But through the game, our team got into foul trouble. We had someone go down with an injury. So there I was, second half, I'm playing quite a bit. Didn't shoot the ball at all. At the end of regulation, it was tied. So we go into overtime. Play really tough. I got fouled a couple times, made a few free throws. First overtime ends in a tie. A couple more people fouled out, so we're down. Now we're really down to the five of us. That's all we have left. At the end of the second overtime, 
Game was tied. Clock is running down. We have the ball. Our star player, Troy Erickson, who was playing exceptionally well that night, everybody knew, the opposing team as well, knew that the ball was going to him, right? He was going to be the one to take the shot. And so he had the ball, but he was just surrounded by people. But here I am, I mean wide open, <laughs> on the three-point line. He sees me. He throws me the ball. Get the ball. I shoot it. Time is running out. It's like silence goes over the whole building. My dad is actually behind me in the stands, so he has this perfect line between, from me seeing the arc of the ball going to the basket. And I hear him in that, in the, in that silence. He yells out uncharacteristically for him. He says, it's God! <laughs> As the buzzer goes off, the ball clanks off the back of the rim and misses. Tied game. <laughs> As I make my way back to that bench, I look up again and say, and my dad is beaming. I did miss the shot, but he didn't care. I shot the ball, and his exclamation during its flight told me that he was there in that moment with me and believed in me. In the third overtime, I think we just all kind of just, everyone finally got exhausted. And our star player took over, Troy Erickson. He, won, he played great. We won the game. I did not score a point in that last overtime. But I had several assists to him throughout the game. So that was my statistic of the night. It was a great game. I remember it well. But the highlight of that night that transformed me was not the joy of starting. It was not getting the win. All of that was great, but it was my dad's voice behind me as that ball sailed through the air. That's what I remember. That's what was so important to me that night, because I had spent much of my growing up years trying to earn my dad's respect and love and attention. And quite honestly, he struggled with it as well. And that night, I was reminded that that was something that's really impossible, to earn it. He believed in me that night, not because I made or didn't make the shot, not because I could have won the game if it would have gone in or anything like that. He believed in me because I was his son. And in essence, I belonged to him. Now, it was a small thing in the grand scope of life, right? It's one moment, one game, one little time. But it was a moment that shaped me. For the youngest son who never shot the ball in the game, for the youngest son who was the quiet one, his exclamation of joy in seeing that ball go towards the basket with a chance to go in told me that he was all there. He was caught up in the moment as well. And it was a moment that my relationship with my father transitioned into something new, something from the old into something that was now new and different. It changed into something, that relationship changed into something which I now became something I was proud of, something that I wanted more of. Now, my struggles and my relationship with my dad have gone on all through my life, and, and new ones come up and go. But that was still a moment that was important. And that small but yet profound, profound moment of grace, it continues to speak to me in days in which I struggle. For I am reminded that how we steward or care for this gift of God's grace does have life-changing effect on people. This grace effect changes lives. It has changed mine. I know it has changed yours in those moments, and I know it changes others. Now, grace, of course, is a free gift that we get. There is nothing we can do to earn it. There's nothing we can do to even not make it possible in our lives. It comes to us as a gift from God 
regardless of where our footsteps have been or where they have gone. But grace is something to be cared for, something to be shared, something that needs to be passed on to one another. I'm going to encourage you today, I'm going to challenge you today to try and be, to think of some ways to be a caretaker of God's grace in these days ahead of us, these months, days, months, even a year ahead of us, that are different than what they used to be for you. That go beyond those traditions of old. That go beyond the normal journeys of grace and love that you maybe have experienced. And to try and think, really that question that's at the end of our text, what one thing will you do differently now that you, because you belong to God? Some things to think about. Some examples. Maybe you give that difficult person some extra patience. Maybe you actually answer the phone when you see your lonely family member or friend's name on the caller ID. <coughs> or when your pastor calls. <laughs> Take a coworker out to eat whom you always see eat alone in the break room. Intentionally dig into scripture and ask the hard questions of relevancy in today's world. Not those traditional ones of old. Maybe you take some extra time to volunteer at an organization or with, with someone, something that you believe in. Some place that you, is important to you. Maybe this is the year that you decide, I'm going to make a change and make an increase in my charitable giving. Whether it's to my church or to other charity that I support. Not, as, not again as a way to earn anything, but rather because we really are transitioning into a time in which more intentional work, effort, and resources are needed. Maybe this is the year that you step outside your comfort zone as a parent or grandparent. You make special intentional effort to believe in and tell your children and encourage them how you feel about them. And to their peers as well, <laughs> even when you have no reason to. Because belonging to God, as the Galatian text reminds us at the end, this belonging to God business, it doesn't bring more rules. It's not another list of something you have to do, but rather belong, living as if we belong to God guides and directs our energies for graceful living. And as you are guided by that, do not be afraid. In fact, I encourage you to be bold in God's gift of grace. Because I think too long we have been passive in it. We have just sat back and we've let it come, and it's been wonderful. And for the longest time, our traditions of life and how faith interjected into it filled that need and void. But now today, our lives are very different. And that traditional place and time and space that the practice of our faith once took no longer exists. And we now need to make bold decisions in how we steward this gift of God's grace how we share it with each other, and how we are a caretaker of it. So this question that's at the end of your scripture today, I really want you to take this home today. Again, read these texts that are in front of you that were shared earlier. Ask yourself that question. What one thing will I do differently now because I belong to God? And to be intentional about that question. Now, I'm no longer a senior in high school. I like to think I am when I get that basketball or baseball in my hand. I'm out in the yard playing with my girls or something. And my body reminds me that I am not. And just like my body is no longer a senior in high school, my challenges, my struggles, right, are different now than they used to be when I was 18. What gives me worry is much different. What inspires me 
has changed. So the challenge before me is how will I steward that gift of God's grace differently now that I am an, since I am a mid-aged adult rather than when I was a young boy? Because I think too many times we, our understanding of faith is stuck back in that time of Sunday school slash confirmation. And as we grow and age and mature and all these other things that our life changes around us, we still have this understanding of God in our lives as we did when we were 12. And we're scared to move beyond that. Because sometimes it means we have to be faced with some things in our adult life that are difficult and that are painful. So how can I be a steward of this grace in this day and in this age? In this last Christmas season, we heard all, all this proclamation about how the Christ child, grace incarnate, I want to call him, the Christ child shows up every day in countless situations and in countless places. So let this bold gift of the Christ child lead you into a new adventure of service and stewardship. New ways of living as one who belongs to God in this new and changing world. This world needs caretakers of this grace more than ever. And we as caretakers need to be bold in this grace more than ever. Let God's grace lead you into those days. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand as you are able. This is a newer song, and you'll be able to catch, catch up with this pretty fast.
gospel of our salvation. We share a sign of our lives uh, for the ministry of Christ's mission and love in the world. We thank you for all of your generous offerings each and every day in the way you share your time and talents and the gifts that you offer now. Thank you. You may be seated. And kids, we welcome you to come forward and help us with our noisy offering. Among all those gifts that God has given us, of which we freely give ourselves, we, re we are reminded that of the ultimate gift of, that Christ has given us. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave it for all people to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have now received, and the sign of his cross upon your brow, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life. Amen. And as we leave this gathering, we are reminded that our worship of God continues, that it really only just begins here, and it continues in our service, in our acts of compassion and kindness to others. In this new week to come, may you shine with the light, the compassion, the justice, and gentleness of Christ. And may you bear witness to the hope of Christ that is within you. Amen. This is one of my favorite songs that you sing. I have the words to this chorus on my dresser where I see it every morning. May we be reminded that our God is able. Greater than all.